Hi everybody, and welcome to another episode of Stock Talk. My name is Amin Reina. I'm an investment coach here at Sage Investors, and this is episode 62. Now, in my course of my work as an investment coach, I spend a lot of time teaching people how to make better investment decisions, teach people how to buy and sell in stocks. And normally that involves uh, teaching people uh, you know, the concept of profit, how companies create wealth, how you know, analyzing a company in terms of you know, their market share, what do they do, what kind of questions do, uh, asking questions like what's their business, uh, understanding their, their finances, be able to analyze a company's financial statement, understanding the riskiness of a company. Is this a risky business that the company is uh, involved in? That's normally what I do, and, that, and these factors and uh, these elements that I teach are, are factors that go into determining whether a stock is going to go up and down. That's ultimately these are factors that are going to drive uh, stock prices, and that's usually how it works. But there's also one other really critical element that drives stock prices, and it's something we take really for granted and we don't talk about it a lot because it's just there and we live with it and it's no big deal. And that element that has a really good important factor in terms of where stock prices are going to go involves rule of law and stability. And if you're interesting, if you look at like different stock markets and different countries around the world, uh, if you look at them in terms of uh, price multiples, price to earnings multiples, uh, countries like Russia um, has a price out earnings multiple of nine. Uh, if you look at emerging market kind of countries and mar uh, emerging market stock markets, they trade around seven. And if you look at the U.S. and you look at some of the Western com uh, countries, uh, more developed countries, they trade at a much higher level. So the U.S., for example, trades at a price earnings of around 21 which is really high, which you think, okay, that's, the U.S. market's really expensive and really, uh, you know, you probably don't want to put your money in the U.S. But there's a reason why people are willing to pay a higher multiple to, to invest in the U.S. And a lot of it has to do with stability and the rule of law and how the rule of law is enforced. It's enforced. So everybody plays by the same type of rules. And you know when you put your money and when you're making investment decisions, you're buying U.S. assets and U.S. stocks or whatever, um, you have that confidence to know that there is a rule of law and there are rules associated with it and there are property rights associated with it. That's what makes America such a, has made America such a, uh, an amazing place uh, in terms of commerce and in terms of business. It's, that's, that's, and it's all driven by the rule of law and the stability, the political stability of its financial institutions and it's also, also its political institutions. So, and ultimately, you know, bringing it down to when you're in terms of investing, when you're buying stocks, a stock, you know, is is a piece of paper that represents ownership and of of, of a certain uh, level of assets. And uh, that other element is, it's a contract. And ultimately, it's about protecting your cash flows and protecting a company's cash flows. It's operated by a certain governance, and that. That's ultimately what drives stock prices. When you're ultimately knowing that there's a there's a governance and it's a strictly enforced governance around it, you're gonna want you're gonna be more conf confident knowing that that your money is 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 secure. Obviously, there's risks associated, but you, that underlying foundation that drives the, the the markets is based on stability and political stability. And the only reason why I bring it up is it seems like we've, you know, we're into a new administration here and a new sort of order in terms of how things are. And it seems like there's a lot of things that are being challenged now. And, those, and that perception out there is that some of that rule of law and some of that stability that we've taken for granted is, is under some threat. And ultimately, if that is, and you know, you know what, it's only a couple of weeks we're into it, but it's been a hell of a couple of weeks. But if that element is now kind of really permeates into how people view uh, the U.S. market and U.S. capital markets and stocks, U.S. stocks, confidence is going to start to wane. And ultimately, that's not good for stock prices. So it's really we're kind of in a very strange zone and up until now you know when we talk about investing we talk about buying selling stocks like the last year the whole discussion has been about interest rates. And you know where interest rates are going to go up and down. Where's this dollar going to go? Where's the currency going to go? Um, that's the, the type of typical discussions we have in, in terms of when we frame our investment decisions. But all of a sudden, that's 
totally out the window. Does anybody know that yesterday the Federal Reserve met yesterday and made a decision on interest rates? Uh, you wouldn't know because all the oxygen that normally was in that kind of discussion um, is now gone. It's gone to what what's going on in the White House and what I, what the White House is thinking and what this guy is thinking about trade relations and protectionism and defending the dollar, you know, manipulating currencies and all that stuff. That's the discussion that's happening. And so, and the question is whether these are, you know, ethically good things and uh, constitutionally good things and are they going to threaten the rule of law and threaten this political stability. So that's a real, so we're very much in a different, it's a very different vibe now. You know, as, much, as I said, as much as I teach people how the mechanics of how to go about making investments, such, this whole underlying element of stability is now in play. And it makes a decision, you have to factor that in now in terms of how you're framing your investment decisions. And so right now, um, like I'm looking at it personally and I'm looking at my portfolio and I'm looking at what I see and I've owned a lot of, I, I'm owning some, I own some stocks of what I think are wonderfully great companies, well-managed, well-run businesses. But right now I'm going, okay, well, if the fundamentals of how that business is run is not there and the underlying stability around that environment that that company operates is not there, I don't know if I want to be owning those type, these type of uh, stocks anymore. So I'm having that conversation with myself and I'm having conversation with other people that I work with are asking the same type of questions. So it's a very interesting dynamic that we're in. It's such a totally different 180 from what we're normally used to, normally what you're used to doing. And so the question is, what do you do and how do you frame that in mind? So. Um, I'm having that conversation with, my, with, my, with myself and I'm still not there. I don't know, you know, I, I think we have to let some things play out in terms of how the market's going. Um, but then ultimately we have to start making decisions. We're all investors. We have to start taking some action. So if the plan, if the stability, if this whole stability factor continues to evolve and become, and we're starting to question that, then we have to start looking at other alternate uh, approaches. You know, we talk about, you know, there's talking about gold. Gold is stability. If everybody's just going to depreciate their currencies left and right, it's going to be a race to the bottom with respect to paper money. Then what do you think of? You think of logically uh, hard assets. So gold comes to mind. Commodities start coming to mind. Because, you know, thinking through the U.S. dollar, if the U.S. dollar starts depreciating because people just start pulling their money out of it and don't want to do business with the U.S. and don't want to pay border taxes and all that stuff, demand for U.S. currency is going to go down. Demand for U.S. treasuries is going to go down. Ultimately, that can create a downward effect on U.S. currencies. And ultimately, there's an inverse relationship between uh, a falling U.S. dollar and commodity prices. So if the U.S. dollar keeps falling, like, I'm just mind mapping this. This isn't like my theory. I'm just thinking this through mind map this and uh, if you have a depreciating currency everywhere that's uh, going to create an inverse relationship with commodity prices so hard assets gold oil um, metals all that element so that's that's out there and ultimately when you're in environments of instability and you don't have confidence in the underlying governance of your country or your business and all that stuff yeah you're going to start looking at hard assets you're going to look at higher quality assets so that's kind of the mindset where it's, it seems like that's where we're going. That's where we are. But again, we have to let things play out and let things evolve. But it's, I, I wanted to talk about this because it's, it's kind of like a game changer moment uh, as investors. And the uh, question is, how do we, how do we deal with that? Um, let me look at it. Actually, wow, I have a question. You asked the question, is uh, market correction? Yeah, like, you know, up until now, I've been thinking stocks are, have been completely overpriced, but overpriced because of really ultra low interest rates. And uh, ultra low interest rates in an environment where economic growth has been kind of meh, kind of eh, kind of average. But that dynamic doesn't seem to make any, that, that's not relevant now because it doesn't mean it as much, but if the stability of our institutions becomes into question, if the stability in terms of the governance that underlies a lot of decision making that we go through is under question. So it's a very, very difficult type thing. I don't know if I answered your question, but um, that's kind of where we are. So I just wanted to share that with you and share sort of what I'm thinking right now as an investor uh, uh, because the dynamics have, have, have changed. 
I, I think the dynamics have changed. We're in a totally different game now. And uh, as much as we can analyze companies, as much as we can analyze businesses and determine whether they're risky or not, whether the stocks are cheap or not, we're in a bigger, I think we're in a much bigger kind of game right now. So we're gonna have to sit back and see how things evolve. And I'll comment about this in future posts. And if you have questions about that, or you wanna talk with me about it, we can talk about it. Um, but I just wanted to share that with you guys for today. So if you have any questions about this or any other topics you want me to talk about uh, related to, from the investing side, feel free to give me a shout. You can follow me on Twitter. My handle is at Sage Investors. I comment daily uh, about all things going on in the market and also my own personal investment decisions. I tweet them out in real time. Um, if you want to hit me through an email, talk a little bit more of my coaching services or my uh, courses that I offer, you can hit me through my website, www.sageinvestors.ca and uh, click on the little contact button and uh, give me a shout, love to hear from you. All right, so that's all I got for you today. And uh, yeah, that's, I think we're good to go. So uh, that's another edition of Stock Talk. Uh, my name is Amon Reina of Sage Investors and we'll catch you again another time. Cheers. Oh,